Welcome back to Bison Overtime. I'm Malik Mitchell. And I'm Dash Menzel. And we are back for another episode. We're going to kick this show off. And we haven't, I don't think we have it yet. We're going to kick the show off with men's Bison basketball. Yeah, first time this year. First time this year. All right. So they're, they've been having ups and downs from last week to yesterday. I mean, they went one on one with UND and USD. It's pretty tough. The question is can they get back to the five game win streak that they had last month? I mean, this has been the story of the season so far. Yeah. It's just been inconsistency, unfortunately. Yeah. They started out the season in non conference play going three and nine to start the season. And then lost their first two conference games to St. Thomas and Western Illinois, but then went on that five-game win streak, and now ever since then it's just been back and forth with wins and losses. So it's just this team has trouble finding consistency right now. Yep. The, it's, it's been tough. You know, last week, uh, the last two weeks, they lost both times at home, which is never good. You know what I mean? So how can they get back to what they used to? You know, defense could be a factor. I know they're, We know what they could do on offense. We know we could do on offense, but their defense, can they get that up to par? I don't know. It's just a question right now. You know, you need guys, your defensive players like Bowden Scumberg and the big guy like Andrew Morgan. They need to start, you know, yep. pounding it in the paint because, you know, defensively, they've been giving up a lot of points in the paint. Yep. Luckily, they had another home game after against UND to redeem themselves, and they did. So last Friday, they faced the University of North Dakota. Yes, I'm going to say the full University of North Dakota because they beat them 91-75. to I mean, the Shield Center was erratic. I mean, everybody was there. 3,000, almost 3,900 people. Yep. This is the largest capacity that they've had all season. Yep, to get, to get into the game, in the beginning of the first half, you know, they were trading points. Both teams kept it close because of the nature of the game, you know, rival versus rival, especially with the Bison already beating them earlier in the season. It was close into the last four minutes, and then the Bison started to pull away in the first half, uh, 53 to 46. And then four Grant Nelson had 24 points in just the first half, 9 for 12 shooting. I mean, it was crazy. And then second half, the Bison scored the first eight points, and it never looked back. They shot a season best of 55.4 percent. The defense also improved. They only held the Fighting Hawks to 29 points in the second half, which yep. helped the 16-point victory. Yep, Grant Nelson led the Bison with 36 points, seven rebounds, and three blocks. Dash, what can you say about this performance? Just an, a career-esque performance. I mean, the most points he scored in the game in his career, I mean, just unbelievable, especially they needed somebody to step up, and he definitely did. And as for some other players, Bowden Scumberg had 17 points and seven rebounds, and Javis Miller had 10 points, five rebounds, and three assists. Yeah, this was definitely a good win for them. They needed this win. I mean, after losing both times at home, they definitely need this, you know, this refresher, I'd say. Definitely. It's just a kind of like a mind reset. You know, yeah. you could definitely tell the team was a little little shocked by the way they lost two straight games, yeah. especially after the one the Kansas City where they had the chance to win and fell just short. You know, they needed a little bit of a reset, especially on the defensive side. And, it, you know, in the first half against UND, giving up that many points against UND, Definitely was not what coach wanted. You know, they wanted to get better on defense, but they definitely did in the second half. However, on the other side, the Bison have to get better defensively. I mean, 46 points in the first half. I mean, we know, we, like I said, we know what they can do on offense. It's not like we don't have the guys. I mean, we got Bowden, Wheeler, and Jakari Wright. I mean, those guys are really good defensive guys. I think Bowden already stamped himself as a defensive guy last year after they start putting him on tough guys like Ace Smith. I mean, he locked them up in the regular season and in the some league tournament. And those are big games. And also, Wheeler and Kari, they've been, you know, improving during the season. So we got the guys. It's just, can they do it? And that is the question, you know, can yeah. they do it? I mean, the big struggle with the defense right now is especially in the paint, yeah. which is kind of surprising. You would think, like, yeah. how good these defensive players are. They'd mm -hmm. be able to be better at defending in the paint. I mean, granted, this conference is full of good three-point shooters as Definitely. well, and that has been a bit of a problem. There's yeah. not much you can do about that. But at the same time, there's been a lot of games recently where the Bison have just struggled to make a stop in the paint. Yep, and then yesterday they traveled to Vermilion, South Dakota, and lost 71-62. to Now, South Dakota led 33-27 to at the half. However, the Coyotes pushed back 15-point lead, 53-38 to in the last 10 minutes. However, NSU came back. You know, they cut the 18-point deficit to just five points, 65-60, to but they just couldn't get over that hump, and then they ultimately lost. Yeah, it was just unfortunate. They had that struggle out of the gates in the first half, yeah. and, you know, we'll get to the reasons why after we go through the stats, but because yeah. there were more reasons than just the play. Yep. But, you know, you definitely can't fall behind like that, especially on the road. We talked about how hard it is to win games on the road this year. You have to earn those victories, yeah. and unfortunately, they did better in the second half, a lot better, yeah. but it just wasn't going to be enough after going down by that much. Yep, Junior, Bowden Scumberg led the Bison with 23 points and two rebounds. Dash, what are the stats you got from Grant Nelson had 13 points, 13 rebounds, and four assists, so a little double-double right there for Grant. And then Javis Miller had 11 points and three rebounds. So they are now 6-5 and five in a conference, fifth in the conference. Tomorrow, they'll be in Brookings. 
South Dakota to take on SDSU at 2 p.m. Now, this game will be tough. The Bison already beat them by six in January, so, you know, they'll want revenge. And plus, this is a big game just in itself. Absolutely. I mean, especially in the hostile environment down there in Brookings. And yeah. we, like, I, you know, I'm just going to beat on this broken record here. But it's going to be tough to win road games in this conference. Definitely. Every team in this conference plays well at home, yeah. and it's hard to win when you're on the road. But you've got to earn those victories. You've got to find ways to win those road games because that's ultimately what puts you over the top. It's what the conference leader Oral Roberts has done. They haven't lost on the road yet. Yeah. So, you know, you've got to find a ways to win on the road. Yeah, the Jacket Rabbits do have fire right now. They're in a two-game rim streak and coming off from home against UND by 23 points. And they're simply just going to want revenge, period, that we beat them earlier in the season. However, it's not going to be easier, though. And talking about that South Dakota game, yeah. there were a couple of guys missing in that yeah. game. One being Luke Yoder. He yeah. was out before the game had started. I'm assuming injury at practice yeah. earlier this week with a boot and crutches. Or maybe so we just for the game that was lingering. Yeah, Possibly, we yeah, we don't know. But either way, boot and crutches, that yeah, can't be anything short-term, yeah. unfortunately. But then also during the game, uh, Damari Wheeler-Thomas only played one minute of the game before yeah. we assume that he got hurt as well. And, you know, with both of those guys down, there go both of your top two point guards right yeah. there. And now what do you do? You have to put somebody like Waddles or possibly Jakari White yeah. in that position, and yeah. maybe they're not familiar with it. Yeah. And we're already talking about this defense having some problems. That's not going to make anything easier. It's definitely not when you got SDSU coming up. Especially, I mean, you can even put Bo in that mix. You know, he's got a lot of experience. I think you can even put him in that mix. But, yeah, this is going to be definitely detrimental to this, especially with this game coming up. What do you what do you suspect they're going to do? What, what kind of moves or what can they do? I mean, obviously the defense is the main focus of improvement. But what else can they do to overcome this game? I mean, they're going to have to move guys around, like yeah. I mentioned. Guys like Walls or yeah. Jakari White. But, you know... I wouldn't say this is a time for panic, but they definitely got to realize that they need to step, every single individual player needs to step mm -hmm. up their game because they're not going to be able to win many games down the stretch here undermanned and, yeah. you know, having that inconsistency that they've been having for some of these yeah. games. and. They need to play perfect games coming up, especially at this stretch in the season. This is the yeah, worst time say. to yep. lose players. This close to the tournament, it definitely doesn't help to lose players. It was kind of like last year when Andrew Morgan got hurt late yeah. in the season. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they definitely got to lock it down. Like, you know, they, we, they've seen this before last yeah. year with Andrew Morgan. So they know what they need to do. They need to step up and take the place, basically. Yeah, to, speaking of too late in the season, you know, Coach Richmond said that a couple weeks ago in a press conference. This is too late to be having issues like this this late in the season. I mean, we shouldn't have defensive problems, especially when, they, like I said, they got defensive guys, man. They, they really do. I don't know what they're going to do. You think they're going to give up? Are you, do you think they're going to get over the hump against SDSU at their crib? It's going to be hard. I mean, we talked about how tough road games have been this yeah. year for every team in this conference. It's Definitely. not going to be easy going to SDSU and getting a victory, especially when you're undermanned. And it yeah. seems like SDSU has kind of found their rhythm again. I think they've won like six of their last seven games. Mm -hmm. So they've definitely got back onto a rhythm. So it's not going to be easy, but I'm not going to say it's impossible either because yeah. – the Spison team can definitely step up when they have men down. We've seen it before in recent years. I think they can do it again. See what happens. Moving on to women's basketball, their last two games were also tough. They went 1-1 one one with UND and USD, one going into overtime. So the season isn't getting any easier. No, especially not down this stretch. And we talked yeah. about, you know, the men's conference being very tight-knit and every team, you know, any team can win on any given day. It's kind of the same thing in the women's conference now. There's yeah. a lot of games that have been very close, kind of upsets, you know, and the mm -hmm. home field advantage is always going to be the number one thing. Yeah, but they didn't have it, and it was tough. Last Saturday, they faced UND and Grand Forks and unfortunately lost 82-73. to I mean, they just couldn't get it, you know, they couldn't get it done like they got earlier in the season. Like I said, they beat UND already, but no home coming, no whole home court advantage. It was just tough for the Bison. Yeah, especially on the defensive side as well, you know, giving up over 80 points in the game. And they scored over 70, and normally you would think that would be enough, but... When your defense doesn't show up, it's just it makes it hard to win. Speaking of the rival game, both teams kept it close in the first and second quarter. However, the Fighting Hawks took the lead 35 to 31 at the half. In the third quarter, UND caught fire, scoring 28 points, ultimately taking the victory at the end. And they only held the Bison to 15 in that quarter too. So yeah. that quarter, it just kind of signified tough. that you know Definitely you can't tough. come back from that. See, Heaven Heavenly though came back alive in this game, scoring 28 points, seven rebounds, two assists, and two steals. Abby Schulte had 12 points, four rebounds, and two assists. L. Evans had. 10 points, 8 rebounds, and 4 blocks. And Emily Banky had 10 points and 7 rebounds. So, and then yesterday they faced USD at home and got the job done. 
86 to 82 in overtime. Though. I think I'm going to need an appointment with my cardiologist after that <laughs> game. One of the, you know, my first overtime game that I ever got to experience here with NESU, either men's or women's yeah. basketball, and it definitely lived up to the hype. To get into the game, it was neck and neck the whole game. The Bison were up 36 to 34 at the half. They were tied up in the third quarter and in the fourth quarter. Now it's 71 to 71. Now it's overtime. The Bison came out scoring six unanswered points, making it 82 to 77 at the clutch shots from both teams. They ended up at 84 to 82, and then L. Evans knocked down a pair of free throws to seal the victory 86 to 82. And towards the end of regulation, the Bison were up by six, and it kind of looked like it was going to yeah. be over. But yeah. USD hit two clutch three pointers to tie up the game and send it to overtime. But then yeah. NDSU turned on the clutch in overtime with Heaven Handling kind of, you know. At the time, I was wondering what they were doing because they were taking a lot of time off the clock, off the play clock to take the shots with only like two seconds left, and it yeah. was worrisome because you know, like, what if you don't get the shot yeah, off? The the time? Shot off yeah. But they did it twice in a row with Heaven Hamling, and yeah. it worked both times to kind of secure the victory. There. Yeah, Ben press conference, Jury Collins, he said, "Yeah, I, that's one of those situations. You have faith in Hamling, and you just gotta step back. If she makes it, I look like the good guy. <laughs> you know, that's it. hey, she has experience. She 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 has a shot. She has experience. She knows what it feels like to have the ball late in the quarter, and hey, you just gotta be the hero." and win the game. It's, th it's really good to see her come back to these 20-point performances because, yeah. you know, a couple of those games, especially the one against Oral Roberts where she only had two points in that game, it definitely didn't feel like it was the same heaven as yeah. we normally see, yeah. but now it looks like she's definitely back on fire, and that's that's something you're going to need down, you know, these final few weeks of the regular yeah, season. But with, and with this win, this is the first time since the 1999-2000 season NDSU has swept the regular season series with USD and also head coach Jerry Collins earned his 250th win. And all the way back in that year, 2000, that was the last time that the women's team won a national championship. Yeah. Granted, it was back in Division two days, but yeah, still. Yeah. Heaven Hamley had another big game, 28 points, again, with eight rebounds, four steals, and two assists. Dash, what are some other stats? Elle Evans had 18 points, seven rebounds, and four blocks. Taylor Brown had 13 points, three rebounds, and two assists. And Abby Schulte had 12 points, five rebounds, and three assists. So they are now 8-3 and three in the conference, second in the conference, and it also marks 9-0 and oh at home, baby. Would you ever think the women's would do... What, like, would do better than the men's in the regular season? <laughs> I don't know. We definitely didn't know this season. And for both the men's and women's teams, before the season had started, it was going to be a lot of moving pieces, a lot of new people coming in, a lot of people had lefts, and yeah. really didn't know what to expect from either one of them. Right. But I'm not sure if a lot of people expected the women's team to be in definitely. second place in the conference this far into the season. And also, I was worried because, you know, both teams, like both teams, the women's were rebuilding, and they were rebuilding, rebuilding. I mean, they got players now from overseas and stuff like that, but they, it looks like this team, not look like, this team is coming together, and it looks very good. Yeah, absolutely, and it definitely helps when you get a couple of good freshmen like L. Evans yeah, and, you know, and um, Abby, Abby Schulte, I Abby believe, Schulte. is the yep. other freshman. And yeah. No, Abby Schulte is a junior. She's, she's, oh, one, of the, yeah, she's uh, one of the vets, yeah. I apologize. There is another freshman, though, on yep. this team that is also doing very well. But, you know, when you get those young players coming in very well and you get those transfers who come in and just make immediate impacts right away, yeah. it definitely helps this team come together. Yep, so tomorrow they'll host SCSU at 1 p.m. at the Shield Center. This game will be tough. I mean, SCSU is at the top of the conference. Just like last season, the Bison, you know, lost to the Jackrabbits by 31 last month. So this will be tough. Yeah, SDSU it definitely looks like an unstoppable force at yeah. this moment on the I women's mean, side right now. And I don't know if I could see them losing in the regular season, but if NDSU can go, you know, into this game tomorrow and pull off I don't know if I want to say upset, but yeah. it might Hopefully. might as well be, yeah. you know, an upset. But if they can pull off this victory tomorrow, that is going to be a massive, massive confidence boost going into the rest of the season. Of course here. it is. I mean I think Having home court advantage definitely helps. We've been harping on that this whole show. But, you know, SCSU is just it's just top dog. It's just, it is what it is. S USD and SCSU has always been top dog. But I think this Bison team could be the one to do it. Eventually, yes. I mean, the USD women's team, they've lost a lot of people, but they didn't get a lot of new people back like NDSU did. Yeah. So USD's kind of falling off the map a little bit, leaving yeah. second place to open for NDSU. For yeah. And meanwhile, talking about conferences, we're going to go back to the men's for a little bit. Talking about the conference standings right now, Oral Roberts yeah. currently leads the way at 11-0 yeah. in conference play. Well, like I said, they and, got a personal vendetta on everybody. Yeah, and when you guys have when you have guys like Ace Smith and McBride, yeah. oh. it's definitely going to be hard and to beat seven them. And that 7-foot-5 fella? Yep, uh, Van Over. Yeah. And, you know, the thing is, though, although they're 11-0 in conference, they do look beatable. Yeah. There have been a few games where they've had a shot to lose. They mm -hmm. had that home game against Kansas City where they won on the three-point buzzer beater. Yep. They had the game against UND up in Grand Forks where they were down at halftime. This yep. team is beatable. If they can't get their shots to go all the time, because they're a very, you know, you know, 
rely on your high end talent to make shots. Make shots. Yep. Team. Yep. And it didn't work for them last year in the semifinal sure against didn't. North Dakota State and. I have a feeling that might come back to bite him again at some point this season. Okay. And then you got second place in the conference right now, South Dakota State. Yeah. Currently on a good streak right now, but if North Dakota State can beat them, it's going to make things mighty interesting. Because yeah. you also have third place in the men's right now, Western Illinois. Yeah. Nobody really expected them to be up yeah. this high. They were second. However, they just had a massive upset loss on the road to Denver last night. They lost by 31 points, which proves the home field or home yeah. court advantage again. Yeah. Denver definitely beat the snot out of them in that game. And then Kansas City currently fourth right ahead of North Dakota State yep. in men's. And meanwhile, for women's right now, South Dakota State, kind of an unstoppable force right now, up at number one yeah. at 12-0 in this conference play. But North Dakota State in second place yeah. at 8-3 in conference New play. Yeah, definitely. And then, But – it's very close, though, right behind them because you also have Oral Roberts, 7-4 and four in conference play right now, and they do have the tiebreaker on North Dakota State. And then you also have South Dakota at 7-5 and five, and North Dakota at 5-6 and six in conference play. Yeah. So just to start with the men's. The men's, you know, it's just they got a lot of teams that they have to worry about, point blank period. And, you know, good thing they beat SDSU. That's, that's how I, that's how, coming into the season, I'm not going to lie, I wanted them to beat them. First, because the way that ended last season, it was just tough, man. It was it was tough. And then you know they got Oral Roberts. You know they lost to them. It's they got some they got some teams to worry about. And as far as the women's, I mean, they just got to keep it up. I mean, obviously they're gonna have that you know that last level with the you know the boss level. Every play the little games, the boss level. SDSU is just gonna be that boss level. It's gonna, it's tough. It's gonna be tough. Absolutely, but they also have to remember that every game is a new one, and yeah. this every conference this year. Any, any, you know, any given <laughs> any team given can Sunday. win any given day. I mean, they really is this year. Like I mentioned with Denver just being the absolute snot yeah. out of Western Illinois last night, who, a team who most considered to be the clear-cut second-place team after they had a good stretch, but then they just looked completely off against Denver. However, there is flukes. There is flukes. There is flukes. Yeah, I consider that too. But I, I get what you mean. The conference is just all, all over the place, especially with the men's. But how do you think the men's are going to do? We'll start with the men's. How do you think the men's are going to do for the course of the season? For the remainder of the season yep. for NSU? Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's definitely interesting considering some of the teams that they have on the stretch here, especially those last two games at the very end of the year at home against St. Thomas and Western Illinois, two teams that they lost to to start out yeah. conference play. Yeah. If they can win both of those games to head into the tournament, no matter where they're seated, I feel like that is going to be a massive confidence boost for them. Yep, and then for the women's? As for the women's right now, I mean, they just need to stick the course right now. I mean... Even if they lose another game or two down the stretch, it's not going to kill the season at all. Even yeah. if they get like a you know a top four seed for them yeah. this year, it's a massive improvement over anything Definitely. that's been going on over the last decade. But if they can stay at the second seed right now, yeah. that is that is just you know an absolute awesome achievement. Yeah, for we'll see team. what we have to do with this week and see how they do. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll dive into Bison Track and Field and some NFL news. Stay tuned. Founded in 1985, the Missouri Valley Football Conference has established a tradition of FCS football excellence. Competing at the highest level of NCAA Division I, student athletes at its 10 institutions demonstrate character, passion, and integrity as they grow as a student, an athlete, and a citizen. The Missouri Valley Football Conference, where leaders are shaped and champions are forged. One kid, one mentor, plus one moment can unlock limitless potential. 30,000 youth are waiting. Be there for one of them. Become a big today. At NDSU, we're going to teach you about how to work with people. We're going to teach you about relationships with people and how to manage those relationships successfully, whether that's at work, whether that's at home. We have majors in agricultural communication, strategic communication, journalism, and management communication. We have students who have graduated who are doing all kinds of different things, everything from marketing to writing content to development to career coaching. We also, of course, have people doing more traditional things like a news reporter or working for TV stations. The faculty members in our department advise undergraduate students. We think that it's important for faculty to develop relationships with our undergrads. We have a advisory board, and that consists of people in the community who are like local business people, and we try to make connections with those people so that literally we know the person that they should talk to about a job. You can't be in the world if you can't communicate. My recommendation is that you take some communication classes at the very least if you can. Even better, do a major in communication.
And we're back. We're going to start out with Bison track and field, starting with the men's. They actually they both competed at the UND Open last Saturday, and they broke some. You know, they they swept some top places. They did pretty good. Uh, it just seems like as they always do. Yeah. But I mean, sweeping as many top places as they did, yeah, though, and as many positions as they did, they had some where it was like you know five out of the first six were Bison or you know the yep. top three. It's just crazy how dominant this yeah. team is on both men's and women's side. And hey, it's even sweeter because you know why? It was a UND Open. Yeah. Okay, starting with the men's, they claimed the top four places in the 400 meter with senior Jacob Rodin winning the event, clocking a new personal best of 47 seconds. Jacob Levine won the 200 meter with an indoor personal best of 21 seconds. And Drake Daniels won the 60 meter hurdles in eight seconds, tying his personal best. Then for the throwers, they swept several events. I mean, the Bison swept the top five places in shot put with junior Cameron Landis throwing by 17 meters for the win. And the weight throw, they took the top four places with grab, graduate Trevor Otterdahl. I mean, he's been killing this since the last four years, and he still is, apparently, <laughs> with 21 meters. And then uh, lastly, sophomore Zach McGlynn won the pole vault, clearing four meters. Dash, how did the women do? Well, for as for the women, Kendra Kelly tied the NDSU record in the 60-meter dash, running seven and a half seconds to win that event. And then Nell Graham ran the second fastest 300-meter dash in NDSU history winning that event in a time of 38.87 seconds. Grace Emineth went, remained unbeaten in the long jump of the season, winning her fourth straight meet in the long jump with five with a jump of 5.97 meters. Jody Lip led the Bison in a sweep of the top four places in the triple jump, winning with a leap of 12.22 meters. Salmana Corgo claimed the 60-meter hurdles title in 8.62 seconds, the third fastest time of her career, and then Deja Moss won the high jump with a leap of 1.62 meters. So they're doing pretty good, and it's going to carry over. So both teams are currently hosting the Bison Open today. Oh, you got something to say? Oh, I was just going to say real quick, I was like, you know, looking through all of our notes and all these stats, I'm just like, hmm, that's all? Really? <laughs> like 20 different stats here we got to look through. Right, right. So both teams are currently hosting the Bison Open today, starting at 12. They started at 12.30, and they'll return tomorrow at 10 a.m. And I actually got a friend, Jack, who's running the mile and ability tomorrow. So we'll see what happens. It's uh, going to be pretty – going to be a even, show. I couldn't even run a mile in an hour. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> That's why I got to give those guys credit. Man, I can't wait to see what happens. But, hey, hopefully they can break some records in their home, you know. Oh, you know they will. I mean, it seems like every single week you got yeah. guys breaking personal – people breaking yeah. personal records, yep. breaking team records. Sweeping top four places exactly. things like that. So, But now we're going to switch gears to – NFL news. Now, I told you that the Chiefs were going to beat the Bengals, and we agreed that the Eagles were going to beat the 49ers, but now yeah. Eagles and Chiefs are in the Super Bowl. Well, first things first, let's get to the AFC Championship game, yeah. since that had a lot of talking points to it, but, you know, I did pick the Bengals, but yeah. I did not take into account all <laughs> the smack talk that was going to go on off the field. That doesn't mean anything. I feel like game, oh. I feel like sports itself, there's going to be some trash talk going through it, you know? Oh, wait till you hear some of these zingers. So, <laughs> I personally, I, I think it's well deserved that they lost because all the stuff that I heard from Bengals fans, certain players like Eli Apple, and even the mayor of Cincinnati was getting into it. And he was saying on a live video that Joe Burrow has been asked by officials to take a paternity test to confirm whether or not he is the father of Patrick Mahomes. Ah, okay. Hey, uh, Maury, the results are in. <laughs> Joe Burrow, you are not the father <laughs> this time around. <laughs> But, okay, but you, you see what I mean, though? Especially when it's so hot in, in that type of game, the championship, you know? There's going to be smack talk. There's going to be a lot of, you know, it, it's, it's just going to be a hype game. Just Absolutely. because of smack talk. I mean, think about the Ravens, 2000 Ravens. They <laughs> trash talk the whole season and they got a job done. It's just, it's just how it's going to be. But you know what the difference was with them with Shannon Sharp and, yeah, uh, and Ray Lewis? Ray Lewis they were them. able to back, back up it that up. talk. Yeah, yeah, if you're yeah. going to talk that kind of talk, you have to back it up. I the mean, they Bengals did back it up in the, in the, during the season. Yeah, but they didn't do it during this game, though. <laughs> definitely yeah, sure. not. The Chiefs, I mean, the Chiefs definitely seemed to have upper hand in the entire game, even yeah. with Patrick Mahomes in that pretty bad leg injury where he was really I only know. on one healthy yeah, leg. Yeah. But the Bengals, the main problem for them was, unfortunately, it was just like last year, their offensive line again. They it. lost three of their starters last week, and they give up five sacks in this game, but that was ultimately their downfall. I just, you know, I believe... And Pat, we trust. I just, I just saw Pat Mahomes, and he's, he's just a winner, man. I think he honestly is gonna. He has a Tom Brady mindset. I'm not saying he's Tom Brady, but he has a Tom Brady mindset. He's gonna try to get the job done, even though he failed last season. But he, he's just a winner, just because he, you know, he lost last season doesn't mean he's not the same old Pat Mahomes. And I told you, did I tell you? We should have <laughs> bet on this game. Oh, I didn't. Well, I didn't think they had a, no chance of winning. I just figured yeah. the Bengals maybe were gonna win it. Nah. But also talking about Patrick Mahomes, yeah, I definitely agree. He's more of a Tom Brady than Tom Brady ever wishes he could be. <laughs> He okay. definitely will be. That's just you had that. I call you a Tom Brady hater. You're just a Tom Brady hater, man. He, hey, he, he just retired, hey, too. he retired. He retired, too. I, Hopefully I, I good. I'll believe it when training camp comes okay, around okay, yeah, later yeah. in the fall. Just but, this way. He'll be watching TV to see highlights. of like, 
Yeah, let's, let's nope. get back in the league. I, I, I gotta go again. <laughs> yeah, I gotta go again. I gotta <laughs> but go again. Um, anyway, now t- turning over to the NFC Championship yeah. game, this game was unfortunately kind of over before it started. Oh my God. I mean, and I'm happy. I mean, we figured that the Eagles would have the advantage, you know, at home with that strong defense. But yeah. considering that Brock Purdy, the 49ers just had no luck with no quarterback luck. injuries. Yeah. And now Brock Purdy got that elbow injury. And then they had to put Josh Johnson in for his first ever playoff experience. Then he had the concussion. So they had to bring Brock Purdy in with a torn UCL. Yeah. <laughs> so he couldn't even throw. Yeah, yeah. It, that, I mean, there was no chance for the Niners in this game. You know what? I was asked who would I want between these two teams. And I said the 49ers. Believe it or not, I look at Cowboys fan, but I used to like the 49ers a lot. I mean, when they had Frank Gore, Patrick Willis, those dogs back then, uh, I, 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 they, I have like the Eagles or the 49ers. I'd rather see the 49ers. But I like Jalen Hurts, man. I like his perseverance. <laughs> I like that he overcame all, I ain't gonna lie, I was one of the guys saying, can he get it done before the season? I mean, I feel like the Eagles, the only thing that's holding them back was Jalen Hurts. And now he put the work in, and now he's seeping his rewards. The thing is with Jalen Hurts, even back when he was at Alabama and he got benched in that championship but game he was for really Tua. Good. For Tua, yeah. yeah. And he got benched by yeah. Nick Saban. And I was always the one who hated that decision because oh, I God. thought Jalen Hurts had a lot of potential. Yeah. And then he went over to Oklahoma, had a good year yeah. there. And then, you know, got drafted in the second round. A lot of people did not like that the Eagles drafted him because they already had Carson Wentz at that point. Yeah. But it ended up paying dividends for the team in the long run. Yep. So how, how do you feel about the, that game? Like you said, it was kind of a kind of a blowout. But, you know, now the Eagles and the Chiefs, how do you think that's going to play out? It's going to be very exciting. I mean, both of these teams have high-flying offenses with great quarterbacks. You know, you got Jalen yeah. Hurts, Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. This is going to be a Let's very – see how that matchups. Oh, yeah. This is going to be a very exciting game. You got Travis Kelsey for the Chiefs. Yeah. He's going to be exciting to watch. A.J. Brown for the Eagles through yeah. the air. That's going to be exciting. And – you know, defenses are a little bit different on these teams. Yeah. But I like the Eagles defense. Though. Yes, the Eagles defense from top to bottom yeah. is amazing. You Terry got Slay Epps in a... the secondary, Slay. Yeah. And then you guys also got guys on the D-line. You got you got three pretty much veterans who are on their last stretch, but they're still playing well yeah. in the Dominican Sue, Linval Joseph, and Fletcher Cox. Yeah. And then you also got Brandon Graham. I mean, Davis, the rookie. Yep. You got you also got Robert Quinn, who they got in midseason who was like a star for the Bears. They've hardly even played him this yeah. year, but they haven't had to because yeah. they have so much talent on the defense. Playing good. But to say that the Chiefs don't have any talent on the defense is incorrect because the Chiefs do have some good talent on the defense. you got Chris Jones, one of the most dominant yeah. defensive linemen in the league. Uh, Frank Clark's been doing a great job pass rushing. Nick Bolton's a good middle linebacker. But the big problem with the Chiefs' defense is their secondary right now. They are That's the so problem. banged. Yep. And it was a problem before yeah. all of the injuries came, and now they got a lot of rookies now in the it's secondary. really a problem because the Eagles got – you know, some guys that can catch the ball now, and now it's the Super Bowl. There's no excuses. Do you think they're going to get embarrassed on that big of a stage? I don't think it'll be an embarrassment. Like, a lot of people are kind of comparing that, oh, this might be kind of like Super Bowl 55, where the fucking yeah, years yeah. just dominated mm-hmm. the Chiefs. Yeah. Well, the problem with the Chiefs in that Super Bowl wasn't exact. I mean, their defense was a bit of a problem, but yeah. it wasn't there. It was the fact that Patrick Mahomes had no time to throw the ball in that game because all of their offensive linemen were hurt. The yeah. Chiefs have a healthy offensive line. I think it, it, as long as they have that and Mahomes is, you know, he should be – more than healthy than he was in the AFC Championship game, I and mean, he looked fine there. So, but think, I, about, think about the narrative. Think about this, right? You got Jalen Hurts, the humble guy, the perseverance, all the things he had to endure, and now he's doing good. And then you got Pat Mahomes, like I said, the mindset of Brady, and he's going to get it done whether he has a, def- like a defensive line or anything. Any, he's going to get it done, right? How do you think that matches? You know, matches up against. Like, do you think? The favor is with the Eagles or the favor is with the Chiefs? I personally think the favor is a little bit with the Eagles yeah. just because of the fact that the, I think it's just because Jalen Hurts, you know, up against that Chiefs secondary is yeah. going to be a little bit of a disadvantage. But the thing is, though, with the Chiefs, if they can get pressure on Jalen Hurts with that good front four that they have, it might not be as much of a problem for them. But one other big thing from this game that doesn't even relate to players, which I find really interesting, it's Andy Reid's rematch against his old team that he coached for so long. <laughs> yeah, he gets yeah, to yeah. play in the, you know, coach in yep. the Super Bowl against his old team that he used to coach. I guess that's coach. funny. So who do you got? I got the Eagles. Off rip, I got the Eagles. What do you got? So I think it's going to be a closer game than you would think. Okay. But – like I said, the big difference is the secondaries. And the Eagles, in my opinion, have the better secondary. Definitely. Not to say that Patrick Mahomes couldn't keep up with the Eagles, but I think the nah, Eagles Pat just have Mahomes. that little bit of an yeah. advantage with the secondary. I'm going to go with the Eagles in a 38-35 to 35 shootout 30 to Super Bowl. Yeah, I'm thinking they win by at least a touchdown or more. All right. You don't think so? Uh, I think it's going to gonna be a fun shootout with I think I might have to take this bet. I, 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 I regret not taking the last bet. But <laughs> thank you for tuning in to Bison Overtime. I'm Malik Mitchell. And I'm Nash Mental. And we'll catch you guys next week. Go Bison.